All right, and we're back for another episode of the Department Podcast with Justin Valentovic, Stephen Clark, and Stephen Bologna, and we're back for week 12? 12, right? Week 12? Yeah, 12. Yeah, this yeah. is week 12 of the NFL yeah. season. We're recording this on Wednesday, so we can take a nice little break before Thanksgiving, and, you know, on Black Friday, so we don't have to do anything. So, man, were those Thanksgiving games bad, right? Yeah, woohoo, who cares? Yeah, bad. Uh, yeah. I guess we'll just kind of start there. Mm. The, obviously, news at this point, the Ravens got moved from – Raven Steelers got moved from Thanksgiving. They got moved to Sunday. It looks like they're the night game now, I think. Something like that. Or at least they're playing in the later window. So we'll know. definitely hit on that game. The Steelers are not happy about that at all. Um, can't blame them. Honestly, they were prepared. Yeah, they <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're prepared to go Thursday night. And then all of a sudden it gets switched to Sunday, giving the Ravens a chance to get a couple of their guys healthy. It might not happen. A lot of their guys still might not be healthy for the Sunday night game. But it looks like the NFL is kind of on the Ravens' side here, trying to get them to be almost at full strength for a game against the best team in the league. So I'd be pissed off about the Steelers too. I would be. Yeah, I agree with you, Clark. It's kind of unfair, really. The yeah. second time the Steelers have been screwed out of this. Yeah, yeah, and that's probably why the annoyance is even more through the roof. But with that, let's go through the whole slate of Week 12 games. And we'll go through, we'll pick them and give them our picks. Jesse and Joe, they're not here. They got schoolwork the end of the semester. Boy, do I not miss that from not Neither being in college I. anymore. Uh, I just okay. finished up today. Nice. Oh, One nice. more semester left, Stevie. One more. And then you can Yikes. go into the abyss called adulthood. But with that, let's start with the current college student. You're up on the first draft pick of, this, of the Oof. show. What okay. What do you want to talk about first? A lot of stuff. Are we starting with Thanksgiving games or are we ending with that? What are we doing oh, here? We're not well, gonna... thank, well, Thanksgiving technically happened at this point. Yeah. We'll get in the recap. Yeah. Uh, okay. 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 Little first game here. We're gonna go with. Okay. We're gonna go with the 49ers against the Rams. Okay. Rams minus six and a half. Forty six oh, yeah. and a half is the the over under. I am. Th- this is a sure bet for me. I mean, the 49ers rolling out Nick Mullins uh, against a Rams team that just looked so dominant uh, on this yeah. past Monday night against Tampa Bay. This Rams defense showing that they're arguably up there with the best in the league with the Steelers. And Jared Goff doesn't look terrible. Clark, Cooper Cup saved my fantasy game against my you. My God, look at what Big win. Win. And he just decided to go off. Granted, both of our teams played horribly this week, but man, he yeah. decided to go off. Like I was like in the like the first half, I text like the first quarter, like Cooper Cup had four receptions already. I texted Steve. I was like, all right, good game. <laughs> and then, he had then, 12 points in the first drive. Yeah, like so, I was like, Jesus Cup Christ. Cup is but. he's proven to be Goff's favorite target. And we've known that since really the Super Bowl yeah. run. Yeah. And really since week, I don't know, eight, nine, maybe the Rams have just flipped a switch and they're back to what they were, you know, two years ago at this point, they look even better at yeah. this point. And the, the 49ers, they're banged up. They're messed up. They have nothing really going from at this point. They can, the Rams can sleepwalk through this game. Easily. Yeah. yeah I like that. No, yeah. no issues. Yeah, and no, no like, issues at all. Dust, wait, minus six and a half, easy taking that. Yeah, they could easily win by a touchdown or more. So with that, Clark, we're up to you. Me. Yay. Um, I should have looked at these games. All right. Um, <laughs> there are a lot of road favorites just kind of eyeballing it real. I didn't count, but just kind of yeah, looking at everything. The Vikings are favorite over the Panthers. I'm going to take a look at that one because I don't like that. I don't like the, minor, the Vikings minus four and a half because the Panthers just dominated the Lions with P.J. Walker at the helm and Teddy Bridgewater is supposed to come back so i would take the panthers plus four and a half on that one uh because the vikings also they lose to the cowboys last week so they're 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 hot and cold it's very difficult i guess to bet with the vikings but i would take the panthers in that one plus four and a half what was over under like 49 for that one eh. yeah 49 eh. i don't know it's hard to tell deleted it <laughs> before Justin deleted it um i would well, probably just stay well maybe under i don't know and the eh. thing with this game is McCaffrey's trying to come back. And quite He's frankly, not. if I'm the Panthers, I would just, I know that he, they ruled him out officially, but it's like, yeah. why don't they just shut him down at this point? It's like, you know, the playoff hopes, they're all but gone. That, that'd be good for us in fantasy with Joe in the running. And I'm top. playing him this week. So, you know, that definitely helps. And with playoffs right around the corner, it'd be good to have him without a first round pick. Neither do I though. Cause Joe yeah. Mixon's also hurt, but <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, yeah, I really don't buy into the Vikings. I've never really liked no. them, nor do I uh, 
I, I just don't trust them at this point. And the Panthers, they've been surprisingly fun to watch, and they put up points. And I'm not saying they're going to go out and blank the Vikings like they did to the Lions, but they could play them pretty tight. But now that it's going to be who is going to cover Jefferson and Adam Thielen because they both have been stellar this year. Yeah, I'm, I'm with yeah. you, Justin. I think the Vikings have the offense to, to really run away with this one. But, the, you know, the Panthers, they, they're trying to sound some some critics here saying that they're, uh, they're very much an up-and-coming team. I mean, they got it done with P.J. Walker and Teddy Bridgewater's leaps and bounds better than him. Yeah. Um, so I, I think this game stays close. I could, I, I'm going to not take the spread here for the Vikings. I'll take the over. I think both of these off, both of these defenses are, are pretty atrocious. Both both teams have of offensive weapons to to put up twenty five plus. But in the end, I'm I'm going to go with the Vikings. All right. So then we move to me, and I want to hit on a game that's near and dear to my heart and Clark's heart, and especially about <laughs> half hour before we started recording this, it came out that DeForest Buckner of the Indianapolis Colts, basically the second biggest important part of the defense, is out at least for the time being on the COVID IR. So they're going to be without a big, beefy defensive tackle who can play the pass and play the run. And going up against Derrick Henry, that's something you don't want to do. And, Clark, you sent me the tweet before about the injury report. It seems like everyone's hurt. All the important pieces are hurt. Literally every single – You know, 10 people didn't practice today, you know, for one reason or another. So with it being three and a half Colts way, that's that's pretty close. Uh, the over-under is 50 and a half. So with that and the Colts defense potentially being banged, uh, banged up, I could see this going into another shootout, like 35, 31. But ultimately, I still think the Colts are going to win. I'm losing faith for the week. I'm, I'm ready to just take the week off and call it a week. I don't have faith. If, if the injuries are all there and the injuries stay the way they are and Buckner doesn't get cleared and Phil's dealing with this foot injury. and Okay, Phil oh. can't be any slower. Yeah, what he right. already is. You're right. He stays in the pocket as it is. But if the injuries hold up, I like the Titans. But just one. to bring up a few of the injured players, Julian Blackman, Justin Houston, Ryan Kelly, Quentin Nelson, Bobby Okariki, Zach Pascal, Philip Rivers, Kyrie Willis, Rocky Sin, Isaiah Rogers, Braden Smith, Noah Starters. Uh, yeah. Starters. All and starters. Anthony Walker. Yeah. Uh, I, I yes. take I take the Titans in this one. I, I, if I'm being unbiased, which I usually am not on this on this <laughs> podcast, um, I'm taking the Titans on in this one. It sucks to say that and hear that, but I'm taking the Titans. Justin, listen. All right, don't, don't try. Don't shoot me. All right, don't shoot me. I can't. I'm going with Tennessee oh. Titans in this one. I, I I think the Titans. They just they they show they played a really good game against. The, the Ravens and yes, the Ravens have been down this year, but they held Lamar in check and Derrick Henry does Derrick Henry things. And this is a Colts team without DeForest Buckner. Like you said, in my opinion, their best defensive player, one of the top in the league and Phillip rivers. I, I just really cannot trust going, going towards the playoffs. So with that being said, I, I think Tennessee is just the better team for this game at, le- at least. Game, um, yeah. And they're riding the, the hot hand too. And, and the Colts, yes, they beat the Packers, but it was a close game to the end. Yeah. Um, so, and, and without a, a Marquez, Marquez Valdez scaling fumble, the Colts probably lose that one, but nevertheless, a win's a win. But in this game, I'm going with the Titans. And with that, we're going to keep with you, Steve, you're up next. Oh baby. All right. Oh baby. Also the, uh... all right. Huge game right here. Oh boy. Huge. Huge. <laughs> Kansas City Chiefs versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Buccaneers plus three, over under 53. Hammer that over. Hammer it, hammer it, hammer it like a carpenter. Like yeah. Justin building beds, okay? <laughs> I think we have, a, we have a chance here for one of these teams to put up to put up 40 plus. I think Mahomes does Mahomes things. Brady did not look good against the Rams. And Brady's been like this all season long. Um the Chiefs' best team in the league, still, in my opinion. I think they get it done by over a touchdown. But the Buccaneers will keep it close and score enough to hit that over. I really think the Chiefs honestly run away with this game because the Buccaneers have not looked good. Bruce Arians has been calling out Tom Brady publicly and through the media, which we have never seen in you know New England, so he can't be happy about that. There seems to be a bit of a power struggle, and we've said it all season long. The Bucs are probably the biggest team that needed a preseason and needed a legitimate training camp because they just look out of sync and not on the same page. And I think they still stay in their 
in their way at this point. And I think the Chiefs really just hammer it home and just flat out murder them, honestly. Um, yeah, I couldn't agree more with both you guys on this one. I think it's easily Chiefs just dominate. You saw how easy, like I said, too, Patrick Mahomes makes this game of football look. And I just don't see Brady having a good game because Bruce Arians does not know how to, to coach a veteran like Tom Brady. Um, take some notes from Sean Payton there, and then it'll go a little bit better in Tampa Bay. But I'm taking the Chiefs all the way in this one, and obviously the Chiefs with the spread, too, and – the over, of course, too, just because it could Chiefs, come down to the a Chiefs could put too. it up themselves. The Chiefs honestly, could, yeah. they could put up the fifty. You're right, honestly, but now Chiefs all the way. And my thing is Brady's arm has been absolutely awful this Horrible. year, just strength wise. Right? Yes. If they get into a shootout scenario, is Brady really going to be able to push the ball downfield? No, not really, not. not at all. And that's what Bruce Arians needs to learn about Brady. Because if you see Sean Payton down in New Orleans when Drew Brees was healthy, Drew Brees is running, just doing these slant passes and these little check downs to Ingram or Kamara. And he's not launching it downfield because Sean Payton knows that Brees can't launch it downfield. That's what Bruce Arians needs to know, learn about Brady, that he's old too and he can't launch it downfield. Also get some running backs who can catch. But yeah. uh, we're off to you now, Clark. Oh, me again. We're flying through these. Yeah. We, always, we always fly through this episode. Especially with three people yeah. this week. Yeah, we're just going one, two, three. Um, do, 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 That's do, how do, counting do. works. Thanks. <laughs> um, all right, let's talk about the game that got canceled. Well, okay. Canceled, postponed. Um, Pittsburgh Steelers, Baltimore Ravens. Steelers favored minus four. I would take the Steelers minus four in that one. It's, it's kind of tough because um, – I feel like the Ravens are going to come out hot just because they want to prove a point that they, with all this COVID stuff and nonsense, but I still would take the Steelers minus four if you had to bet on this game. Uh, the over, I, uh, yeah, um, I don't know. Over on is kind of tricky. <laughs> it's, it's tricky. It's tricky. Thanks for putting it. Just, just, just leave it. It leave was 45. It. Leave it. I have short term memory. I'll just leave it on the document until we're on to the next game. It's not that hard. God. Week 12 rub down. <laughs> week, week 12 rub down. I wish. Um, oh, God. That's what I'm going to do if the Colts win. Okay. Um, what are we talking about? Pittsburgh, Baltimore? Pittsburgh, baby. I'm, I'm taking Pittsburgh. I don't know what else to say. I'm taking it's- the game got announced that it's going to be a one fifteen kickoff. It's going to be hilarious seeing – because they're not going to change their graphics. They're going to say Sunday night football at 1 in the afternoon. So thank you, NBC, for that. Yeah. Um, uh, that's just – really – oh, it did. Wow. Yeah. We talked about I we talked about this game when we thought it was going to be played on Thanksgiving on the recap. Yeah. But it, it doesn't change anything. The, the Ravens being at full strength or could be full strength, whatever. It just gives the Steelers more time, you know, to prepare. So – Pittsburgh's going to run away with it. I really think they're going to keep Lamar in check, and the Ravens are going to look really bad this game. Mm. All right. One-man army coming in hot. I, I, I think wow. recently Big Ben has gone off to really slow starts. Yes. Uh, you know, no touchdowns in the first half last week or the week before that. I think the Ravens come out hot, like you said, Clark. Last game, uh, last time these two teams played, Lamar threw a pick six on the second play of the game. I don't think that happens this time. Um, I, I think if the Ravens come out fully healthy, which obviously this game got moved back probably to keep them healthy because they know that this is game is going to draw a lot of viewers. Yeah. I think the Ravens can win this one. I, I really do. I think their defense could step up. And I think Lamar, he's got to come out and show something. I mean, the guy's been getting hated on the past couple of weeks. So, and, and look at this game against uh, Tennessee as a real wake-up call. I mean, Harbaugh was pissed after this game. So I- I'm expecting a, a fired up flock. All right. And we are up to me. And let's talk about. Oof. Yeah. yeah. We're, in that uh, We're in that part already. I assume Sunday night football, just because I'm going off the rivalry, because the matchup itself is not appealing, but the Chicago bears at Lambeau, no fans. It doesn't matter. Packers up seven and a half. They'll run away with this game. Bears don't stand a chance. They can't get the ball moving on offense. Their defense, it's okay. But Aaron Rodgers pissed off after a heartbreaking loss to the Colts. He's coming out with a vengeance, and one thing he's been good at is killing the Bears. So it's going to be an absolute massacre on Sunday night football. Yeah, Bears suck, too. It's not even that like Rodgers <laughs> is good. The Bears just suck. Um, 
I don't have faith in them at all. Put that to minus 14 and a half at this point because Rodgers is coming out firing. I don't care if the Bears have a good defense, which they do. Colts had a good defense, and they still put up 30 points against the Colts. So I, I'm taking the Packers all the way here. Yeah, we're, we're going bear down on this one. I, I think Rodgers just comes out just – slinging it like he always does putting up 30 plus points on offense the bears with nick Foles, they can barely muster up three touchdowns so i i think this they can game barely is muster up three points close. did you see uh, that so it's okay it's, oh the circle of life of, that was cool yeah with, with the bears and jaguars yeah Very i saw funny. that it is funny I'm trying to find that because it's just like yeah. the backup quarterback who is that chef oh my that? gosh was it Chef? I saw it on Instagram. So it might have been, yeah, I saw it on CBS Sports. But. Yeah, CBS Sports Instagram. Oh, I have it, yeah. So here's the craziest part. Mike Lennon got benched for, in 2017 for Chicago's Mitch Trubisky, who got benched this year for Nick Foles, who got benched last year for Gardner Minshew, who got replaced by uh, Jake Luton, who is now benched for, in favor of Mike Lennon. Circle of love, baby. Wow. The circle God, of remember love. when Mike Lennon was supposed to be, like, the next great thing? Like, he – the Bears gave him the bag. I and don't then know drafted why, they... Trubisky immediately. That was like the same offseason when Josh McCown and him had like great seasons and both like teams just threw the house at them. Yep. Like, These are career journeymen. What are we doing here? Why are we doing this? Yeah. No, I remember that. Ugh. Who knows? Brutal time for both franchises, and they're not that far removed because they're mm-hmm. – But mm. we are over to Steve now. There's two okay. of you, so it's Bologna. Yeah, I'm about okay. to say which one. <laughs> So let's take a trip over to East Rutherford. Oh, Miami Dolphins at the New York Jets. Jets plus six and a half. Uh, over under 44 and a half. Justin immediately hit the delete button on me. Almost. Uh, so, he did. Oh, my God. Miami with a very embarrassing loss last week to Denver. We all, they're six and three. We all thought, okay, this is a team that might be able to sneak into the playoffs. Well, two attack will get benched starting the fourth quarter. He remains the starter this week, but I, I think they're okay. They're versing the Jets this week. They get a nice, easy win. Jets, honestly, haven't looked horrible as of late. Um, no word of Sam Darnold is playing in this one, but nevertheless, I, I think Miami is just the 10 times better team, and if the Jets lose this one, it's official. They're going on 16. Every, it's just that every East AFC East quarterback has had their chance to just – kick the Jets while they're down. And this is Tua's time to kick the Jets while they're down and he'll have a career game and he'll look really good and the Jets will look really bad. And it's just nothing else to talk about because the Jets are an abysmal franchise and there's nothing going for them and nothing positive at this rate. So this game's irrelevant, but the Dolphins are absolutely going to just, there's no contest. And if the Jets somehow pull this off, they're shooting themselves in the foot. I badly want to take the Jets in this game. I do. It's just the Dolphins defense is too good. If the if they were playing the Bears or something this week or the Lions or some other crappy team from up north, I would take the Jets in a heartbeat because I feel like they've played really well the last couple of weeks. They've stayed close in a couple of games and they're some for some reason trying to get a win. I don't know why. You already have that number one locked up, so – I don't know why they're even trying at this point, but they're already eliminated from playoff contention too, so it doesn't even matter. But I got, got to stick with the Dolphins. It's just a smart move. It really is. Yeah, it's the safe bet. It's a smart move. And once again, the Jets, they shouldn't have any motivation. to like They should just stop trying, honestly. Just get Trevor Lawrence and have hope and move on to next year. And let's move on to the next game over to Clark. Um, yeah, we talked about one team that usually plays in East Rutherford, and I'm going to the other team that usually plays there, but is not. They are in Cincinnati this week against a Joe Burrowless Cincinnati Bengals. And How we, freaking lucky can they get? I know, right? I mean, and, come and, on. And we know how the Bengals were in previous years. Granted, Dalton was around and some other probably bums that I don't remember, but we know how bad the Bengals usually are so i'm gonna take the giants in this one at minus five and a half for them the Bengals um, are literally back to square one to last year yeah except for t higgins that's the only yeah thing <laughs> they have absolutely last like, year's Bengals. Yeah. like mixon's hurt burrow's hurt their defense is still awful their o-line's abysmal and it's just like how lucky can the giants get at this point and it's amazing that it's week 12 and a team that's on the road with three wins at this point is a five and a half point favorite. 
Yeah, but I mean, only in 2020 at this point. Yeah, and, yeah. And if they win this game, they'll be tied or in first place, depending on the tiebreakers, with either Washington or Dallas. The, the Bengals, uh, they're rolling out a quarterback they just signed this week, Brandon Allen, legendary Arkansas it's, Razorback. It's amazing that they're starting a quarterback. They literally, they that is the epitome of waving the white flag. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I mean. The backup that they've had in camp and in season and on the bench for you know the whole year, he's not even getting a look. That's what, that how bad Finley? can he be then? That's Ryan Finley. No, he's he's really bad. Like he's no, I know really he really bad. No, he's he played last year a little bit, right? Yes. Yeah, he's, yes, he's atrocious. Awful. Yeah, that's so, the two the two in what fourteen Bengals last year. Yeah, yeah. God. So just easy easy to win here for the Giants. They had they're in the Bengals literally at the perfect time, yeah. and the, the, we could have a new first place person that at first place team after this week this is i i Christ. hate the east i really do i still Thanks. think steve, steve <laughs> i still think the football team's winning that division i really do honestly i i think they do because if you look at the quarterbacks i really think alex smith is the best quarterback in the division he is 100 percent by far if they, if they win if they win tomorrow at dallas i'll feel a lot better but they still have to play the steelers which i hate well that doesn't matter so, so do we, Steve. So do we. Five wins gets you the East. It's all that matters. It's really five or six. Five or six. I think six. I really I think. I, I think the Giants win it. It's, it, just it, it's honestly Giant football team. Those are my two I'm down to right now. I was trying to figure yeah, it out I have, earlier. Today. I have no hope for Philly, and I have no hope for Dallas. Yeah, even though Dallas did beat Minnesota, but Minnesota is hot and cold. But uh. Yeah, and I'm up, so let's go with yeah. – uh, Las Vegas at Atlanta. Raiders are getting three points. Over under is fifty five and a half. Bologna, I see you <laughs> deleting it a little bit. I'll just... I was going to delete it on him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, no, I don't. I, re- I really like the Raiders. The Falcons are a joke. The Falcons are a mess. The Raiders are a productive and good team. A little, they're not, you know, quite there yet, but they're capable. They're NFL quality. You know. They can think and play at this level. More, so. more than that. They're more than NFL. Yeah, they're a they're, playoff they're legit. team right now. They're, they're legit. They've beaten the Chiefs before and kept it close with them on Monday Night Football last week. So, yeah, and they're I legit. Don't, I think this will be another game where the Falcons only put up like nine points. Like, I feel like we always see that where it's like t- Team X 32, Falcons 9. Like, whenever the Falcons fail to score, it's always like 9 to 12. Like, yeah. that's their, that's their yeah. number. So give me the Raiders. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll take the Raiders too. Falcons. Matt Ryan's been playing really bad recently, and this team just really—they have no direction. They're stuck in this phase of we have players that can maybe get us a couple wins, but like the rest of our team's bad. So where do we go from here? Um, but uh, this is another lost cause season for them, and they already started it. They already started the process of with firing Dan Quinn. Um, so the wrecking this ball's is, coming. This is a big win for the Raiders here. Yeah. And I really think if they coming lose for this Indy, game, maybe. <laughs> no. no, no. Best case scenario: Colts trade for Darnold. They bring back Phil, give Darnold a year off, and then <laughs> what, what Phil retires. From? And then, what have I done? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what did this come from? I don't um, know. Yeah, no, I agree with that statement. What I, statement I, about Phil and Darnold? Yeah, or no? yeah, no. Whatever. I'll give, you, I'll give you Has- Haskins from no, Rocky scene. No, no, <laughs> no. Get Haskins as far away from the. He will be in the XFL. He Haskins will be in Ford to Forrest Buckner. How do you like nope. that one? Clark. Him, him with the other two uh, Ohio State quarterbacks, the Cardell the and Forrest uh, Buckner with COVID is still a better player. The Forrest Buckner and Quentin Nelson for Dwayne Haskins. Will you take that deal? Deal. Okay. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll throw in freaking like Jay Gruden's contract too. That we're still playing. <laughs> Oh, and with that, Bologna, we bounce back to you. We got five more games left. Wow. Okay. Let's let's take a trip to Justin's favorite city, rhyming with Philly. Seattle at Philadelphia. Philly plus five. 51 is the over. Hammer both of these. Hammer them. Hammer time like Justin with the bed. Seattle easily going to put up 30 plus, And Philly is just a lost cause. Definitely a huge loss for them. Russ just going to keep keep the train going. Huge win against Arizona last week. Long awaited rest. Uh, Philly the Philly lost against the Browns, and they you know they kept it close. But fans are calling for Carson Wentz's head in that in that. They're calling that for everybody in Philly. 
Yeah. And ain't so. it a thing? The once uh, Frank like <laughs> Frank Reich left the building, uh, Philly's kind of falling apart offensively this guy just saying <laughs> you know what happens um, uh, but Carson Wentz is also mentally broken and just ha- doesn't have the will to play football I think anymore at least for the Eagles oh, that's yeah. what, that's what it looks like and honestly oh. we should have added like over under how many pick sixes or interceptions Wentz is gonna have because he's good for at least two a game at, at this least rate. two yeah I was gonna say um I'd go with two 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 is good um and I said in the last pod I, I know he's going through stuff Carson Wentz doesn't look there but Carson Wentz sucks He's not good anymore. There's no more excuse that he's injured. He's fully healthy, like being like body wise, he's healthy. Maybe not up there wise, but he's body wise, he's healthy, and he's f- physically ready to play the sport. And he is not performing. To Ain't this be. the worst year to be fully healthy too for Wentz? Yeah, because yeah. they have no excuses. And because if he went oh. down, I was like, well, we don't have our quarterback. Well, then at that point, no one has a quarterback in the East, but. Yeah. Boy, he's his days are numbered. Him and Peterson, I think they go out at the same time. Like, if you bring in somebody, just completely clean house. Clean house, which they paid him big too. Like we they paid him about. the house. Yeah, so I don't know. That was the shortest Super Bowl window of all time. <laughs> one year, <laughs> literally, literally one it. year, and lucky. And maybe too. the Falcons. Very lucky. Maybe the Falcons because they've That's never recovered. There. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. The Falcons. Yeah. Maybe they saw the writing on the wall, and that's why they drafted Hurts. I don't know. They're, he's but, starting to get more snaps, but but here's uh, the thing: they've stuck with they haven't pulled Wentz at all when he's looked so bad, stupid. and they haven't put in Hurts. So then at that point, how much worse is Hurts? Wasting? Uh, oof, I don't want to know. <laughs> I really don't want to know. <laughs> but hey, uh, what, what was this game? Seattle? Seattle? Easy? No, it's in Philly. No, I, I was picking the team. Oh. I said Seattle. Yeah, it's against Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Seahawks all the way. Russ is good and Philly's bad. Who's up next? I don't remember. You Hard sure. Um ugh. Yuck. <laughs> a, a lot of yuck <laughs> left. Um Cardinals Patriots. Let's go there. Oh. Cardinals are favored and they should be by a lot because the Patriots ain't too good. So the Cardinals minus two and a half. I'll take that um, all day long just because I know Patriots played a, a good game with the Texans, but the Texans are not a good team as well. The Cardinals had a loss to the Seahawks the week prior, but the Seahawks are a good team. But the Cardinals come back looking fire, looking good. Cardinals. Yeah, I really just – the Patriots, they could scheme all they want, try to take Hopkins out of it, try to take Kirk out of it. Try to take Edmonds, try to take Kyler Murray out of the game. But they just don't have the offensive firepower at all yeah. to keep up with them. You know, Cam, he's bad. He's been bad. It's as simple as that. They really can't pass the ball at all because they have no targets and they have no, I mean, they have a, some good running backs, but it's like, how much are you going to live with that? But for me, give me the Cardinals all day. I think this game's going to be really, really close. I think, I think, like you said, Justin, Bill might be able to scheme around something here, get Kyler, um, you know, limit his game a bit. You shadow Gilmore on Hopkins. You can easily uh, take him out of the game. At the same time, it is Kyler Murray and the Patriots are the Patriots of 2020. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say the, the Cardinals do take this one, but don't be surprised if it comes down to the last seconds. Yeah, absolutely. So we are back to me and I want to go with, the Los Angeles Chargers taking on the Buffalo Bills. Bills are up five oh, and a baby. half. But one thing that we've seen is that both teams love to push the ball downfield. And also, though, the Chargers, they like to lose close games and barely win the games they do. So, honestly, I could see them, even if they lose, still losing within the five and a half. So I'd take them to cover. But I still think the Bills outright win. Outright win, I think the Bills do too. But they, they were on a bye this week, right? So they're rested as yes. well. Um, and the Chargers just don't get the job done. They have a really good team, a really good quarterback in Justin Herbert that we've praised on this show plenty of times. But they just don't get the job done when it counts, especially against a contender in the AFC East. So I'm taking the Bills as well. One man army, part two. Again. I'm going. I, I'm going with. I'm going Woo. with. Uh, Los Angeles here. I think it's time they finally get a win. They've played too good of football to not to only have two wins on the year. And just just look for this to be the upset of the week. 
Herbert continues. He's on pace to break every rookie passer record of all time. Look for another 350 and three touchdown game. Keenan Allen, I think he had like 16 catches last week or something like that. Um, so I, I think I think they're it's going to be a shootout, and the Chargers come out with the victory. Um, yeah, I, I like that. But um, back to the – I know we t- talked about the Giants and the Bengals earlier. A report coming out right now that Giovanni Bernard has a concussion. So they're down – They're down to the half third backs right back. now. With the third running back, I just looked it up, is Samaje Perrine. Samaje Perrine? Was it, was Former he a- Washington football uh, set player, baby. Allegedly benched 500 pounds before. So I'll point that out there. So they're down uh, to him, this bum. Oof. Um, so that, that's even more sooner. incentive to take the Giants now in this game if you didn't already have enough incentive before. Uh, and with that, we are to the Steves with the last two games. So Bologna, you're up. Okay. Leave me with. <laughs> I'm gonna leave Clark with his his AFC uh, South partner there. So I'm gonna go with Thanks. the Saints <laughs> against the Broncos. Broncos plus five and a half. Forty four is the over. Uh, I, I I think I'm gonna take the under on this one just because um, the Broncos just simply don't have the offense to put up twenty plus points, uh, especially against the Saints defense and. Uh, I, I think the Saints are just overall the better team. Not really much to say about this game. Um, Taysom Hill played really, really well, and a lot of people thought he wasn't going to. But his his dynamic as a runner really helps this team. And really, you know, with the team taking attention, Alvin Kamara, Michael Thomas, he can utilize this. I mean, two rushing touchdowns last week alone. Um, you know, he could utilize that game to really fool some defenses. And the Broncos, just again, one of the worst teams in the league. Yeah, um, I agree. The Saints, they're just going to come out and blow the doors off him, even with Taysom Hill at quarterback if he's there. And Drew Locke, I don't like him. He's not good. I don't trust him at all. They got a fluke win this past week against Miami. I don't think they do it twice against the Saints. I think they do it again. I'm taking the Denver Broncos in this game. I have found a little bit of faith in Drew Locke after last week. Um, the Miami has a really good defense, and I know they have didn't score much against them, but they still got it done and beat beat them. I know Saints have a really good defense as well, but I whoa, what, what, what happened? The Broncos. Yeah, I'm taking the Broncos. Get out of here! I want to change yeah, it up a little out. bit. You scared out. me. I thought like I thought something happened. I thought, like something no faint, someone fainted in your room. Give me as my upset of the week now. Ooh. I'm taking I'm taking the Broncos. I'm taking the Broncos, Ooh. man. All right, and with that, I just want to change things up a little bit. We're all agreeing. Yeah, we're yes now. We're all yes. Talk about the last game. We have five minutes, Justin Baltovic. Hey, we're good. We're good. We're good. We have five minutes. I'm taking the Broncos. All right, last game, Justin. Um, what is it? Let's let's not delete it before I deleted it. Yeah, I know you deleted. So okay, because we've been talking about deleting. So I just make a Google run a Google Doc of like the games and everything, so we can all look at it. And as we you know, so we don't talk about the same game twice. I delete it, but apparently I delete it too quick. Yeah, because we're talking about it, and if you get rid of it, um, Browns Jaguars, Jesus Christ, that just doesn't sound fun. In Jacksonville, Jaguars plus six and a half. Browns are favored. By almost a touchdown. A touchdown wins it for the Browns. And I'm going to take that. I think the Browns cover this easily. Um, I'm going to take the under in that. I just don't see the Jaguars scoring many points at all during this game. Maybe three or six points. But give me the Browns. Browns all the way. Yeah, I don't like – oh, God. I don't like the Jaguars at all. They're they're going – they're tanking. It's obvious. And, you know, they pull Luton, who obviously was just not ready at all. They're going to Mike Glennon, who's not much of an upgrade, if we're being honest. Yeah, Browns, they look fine. They're good. They have Chubb back, even though they're not running it too, too much with him. Through You know, they, they're splitting carries with Kareem Hunt, but whatever. The Browns all the way. The Browns are on their way to eight and three. I mean – 2020 can't get any weirder. Uh, this is a team without Odo Beckham Jr. They're still doing pretty well. The Jaguars, uh, terrible franchise, terrible team this year. You guys know it firsthand. Um, you know. Oh wait, week one. Sorry. Um, oh, and this thank is you. this. <laughs> right, this well, is the Colts did that on purpose. I'm still saying that. So the Jaguars didn't get Trevor Lawrence. The Colts did that on purpose. Hey, maybe you never know. <laughs> but. Uh, big loss here for the Jaguars and 
Browns keep keep pushing it forward to uh playoff run. And Nick Chubb, man, he is He's such a, a good dog. running back. He's so good. And uh, that's I mean, even like they have Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Like Kareem Hunt could be a starter on almost every single team in the NFL, and they have just both of them running out of the backfield. So it, it, and the Jaguars are very depleted all of both sides of the ball. There's not a good football team at all. And that's our week 12 picks of the NFL season. We'll be okay. back later, you know, to wrap up week 12 on Monday. I don't know. What, I'm, <laughs> trying to think, I'm trying to think. Later. Trying to figure out when we're doing it, but whatever. That's week 12. Hopefully, who knows how right we'll be, but that's in the books. And Clark, wrap up this podcast. Oh, um, yeah, guys. Happy Thanksgiving, first of all, to all. You hope you all, everyone had a great Thanksgiving. I uh, hope you're bought some a new Xbox, new PlayStation while you're listening to this right now. So, um, no, one's hope getting, no one's getting those. I know, I know, I know. Thank God I got mine already. But, um, thank you guys again for listening to this episode of the Department Podcast. All three of us, plus the other two who aren't here, appreciate you guys listening to us. Um, make sure you guys never miss an episode. So, subscribe on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Leave a comment, leave a review. Let us know your picks if you agree with us or if you disagree with us, like my Broncos pick and all that. Um, make sure you guys follow us on our social medias on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at department underscore pod. We have a wrestling recap coming up this week, a week 12 breakdown. Maybe we'll throw in a basketball or baseball if something big happens, but so far nothing has really happened too much that we didn't already cover. So stay tuned to all that fun stuff and we'll see you in the next episode.